What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media, particularly important at the moment as these live shows are going out to a fairly limited audience but also it increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Bev, Chocolate Saiyan, Tenth Man, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Hey, 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 good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Vietnam. Any signs of a physical geometric earth curve edge, formerly known as the horizon? No. Formerly known and as no the one horizon, here formerly known as the curve. <laughs> yeah, formerly known as earth curve. One of the... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to check out the videos or go to his channel and check it out on his channel, D A T R H, or Darth, play on the. <laughs> I saw he came out with another one. Yeah, he did a <laughs> quarantine version. Right, he did a quarantine <laughs> edition of Globe Earth Dictate. And in the quarantine edition, if you check out his very first frame, it's got like a, a piss take of my shop, which is very neglected at the moment, I've got to be honest. And it's. Let's not get into that. Anyway, he's got a, a screenshot of like all the different products from his piss take shop. And one of the items is Geometric Horizon. And it says, photo not found. <laughs> no, does it? I didn't see it. <laughs> You've gotta, you got to go back and look. From past experience with his videos, when he's released stuff in the past, you, you go back to it in the, or somebody points uh, pointed out to me, oh, did you notice this in the chat feed that's going by? You're like, no, I didn't really pay any attention to that. Or did you notice this in the video? Did you notice that in the video? So on this occasion, as soon as I saw it, I was like, right, I'm going to watch it twice and I'm going to look at all the things that are non-verbal and visual rather than listening to it the second time around. So I'm reading all the chat and reading his, you know, he's actually commenting in his own chat, the guy who makes the videos. So Darth is in there chat chatting. And some of the things he said right towards the end of his chat stream were profound and a, a little bit, I was a little bit, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, go and read it. Um, I've just called it Globe Earth Dictate on my version and there's a link to his channel below if you want to go and subscribe him, you should. He puts a lot of work into these videos. But yeah, check out what he writes at the end, right near the end of his chat feed in terms of what we can do going forward. And it, it gave me a real insight to, to the, the guy himself and what's on his mind. And it was quite eye-opening. So there were, that was the only time... They're always very funny, and everything in that chat feed was funny, especially the CIA comments. <laughs> just very, very funny. But um, but yeah, his comments I was I paid particular attention to because he's actually you know named himself in there. It's like Darth is making a comment in his own chat feed, um, and uh, yeah, so I paid quite close attention to what he actually had to say. And uh, yeah, it was quite humbling in some ways. But yeah, check it out. It's called Globe Earth Dictate by D A T R H Channel. So any signs of any Earth curvature? Not from Morongo Valley. Not, not from any valley. Not from Hollywood. An Earth curvature model, but we don't live on one of those. No, no one can ask me. Yeah, Hollywood's just down the road from me. Anyway. <laughs> any signs of axial rotation of the Earth based variety? Check it out. 53 dedicated live viewers who've actually foraged their way to find this live show. So thank you very much to all who've tuned in. Hello, Arwin. Hello. 
Silence, getting, Legolas. Uh, a YouTube update. Silence, Silence Legolas. <laughs> what the just came here? <laughs> Come yeah, on, Aaron, and, I'm and, sorry. And, and technically, yeah, you know what? A, a, a dying Corona cat is not a person, so... Get out! Schizophrenic. <laughs> Schizophrenic is a real person. <laughs> Add it to the Corona count. He's dropped out. I think he's got like a connection problem. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Nope. Nope. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Negative. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? No, no evidence. <clears throat> Any evidence for self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? Where's uh, Flatzoid with his marshmallow comet? <laughs> Cooey center. Well, I, I think it's safe to say that the conception of the molten iron core at the center of presupposed spherical Earth is about as presuppositionally conceptual as the vastness of outer space with all the stars being literal giant objects in super far distances. I think it's on the same scale of presuppositional thinking. It's pretty out there. I agree. It's it's up, it's right up there with on the bullshit o meter. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? Well, the ballers seem to think they can prove it by bringing a container and trying to prove it with a container, which is the height of uh, insanity. I'll just repeat the question. <clears throat> Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without <laughs> a container? That's the word they're missing. <laughs> well, you start with a container and then you do something <laughs> in that container and then you claim that you got gas pressure without a container. That's Precisely, like, Arwen. Yeah, that's how they do it these days. Third time a charm. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without a container? Okay, no. All right, so for all the fundamentalist religious zealots who believe that outer space is real and is a sky vacuum, it isn't. It's a violation of natural law. Outer space is fake, as are all pictures and travel claimed to have taken place there. Any evidence of the R value? Earth radius, discussed in the pre-show with Bev. So what if the radius is slightly bigger or something? You know, it doesn't really matter. Oh, I mean, at best... All we've done is debunk the radius. Yeah. At best. At right. best. So what if the radius turns out to be a little bigger, you know? What does that matter? A little bit bigger, like the, the distance I mean, to the moon, oh, bigger. Only 264,000 miles. I mean, <laughs> uh, that's yeah, but you that's can, nothing. <laughs> you, can, you can think of it as the radius hasn't been destroyed, if you want to. Yeah, you can still... Yeah. Well, no, you can't. <laughs> R has been absolutely obliterated and made the model, model completely untenable. So, unfortunately, no, this isn't one of those times where you can think of it as not being smashed to oblivion. It has been. There is no evidence of R. Yeah, but gravity's not a force. You can think of it as a force. Yeah, but in that instance, you can also think of it as a roast chicken. <laughs> oh, no, hey, we actually need a, a subject matter expert to say that first, right? <laughs> I'm a subject man. Uh, hold on, we've got Tenth Man. Do you farm chickens? Uh, I have. Uh, you know what? If if people would be encouraged to think of gravity as a roast chicken, it might actually help its popularity. Because roast chicken is nice, right? Well, I I can pluck one of my answers if you'd like, but I think it's self-explanatory. Oh. Look, if you're just going to give us these poultry <laughs> answers, um, if you're going to give do us you, a poultry answer, then... <laughs> Do you think do you think Richard Branson's gonna return the deposits on those space flights on the previous questions now that the radius is bigger? I just charge more for fuel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. He'll have to get more money. 
Um, oh, wait, did I miss something? What did you say? Fuel? Just a joke. Well, it's kind of a funny joke, though. Because technically, do they really measure the amount of fuel spent in an airplane when pre-calculating the price of tickets based on literally, like, you know, your, your car in your gas with the meter? Oh, like, it's this amount, that amount. No, I don't think so. They just calculate it based on the supposed distance the plane is gonna travel. Oh, so, but that's how they proved that we went to the moon. Didn't you hear Neil the the Neil the smoked grass Tyson? He said because somebody <laughs> calculated how much fuel that it took for them to go to the moon, therefore it had to have happened. Right. That that was <laughs> not go. my point, but good point. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my point is that if the radius would suddenly officially become bigger, then they would probably add up uh, on a little price, like that. My but favorite of all, my favorite claim when it comes to the assertion that we've been to a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum is to say that it would be more difficult to fake it than to just do it. Therefore, it's real. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a whole debate with, with Kosho one time about that same subject and he clearly said that it would be more difficult to fake it I was like what the hell <laughs> how does that even make sense man you guys just live in a fantasy world because... uh, that concludes the house housekeeping anyway so thank you very much oh it's only Another 10 minutes yeah, that's okay. It's good sometimes to have a concise... Yesterday, we didn't even get through all of them. You know, we were into dis discussing quantum mechanics for 70% of the live show. Uh, I don't yeah. mind going through some of the housekeeping and it's spanning into a very interesting conversation. Sometimes we just rattle our way through them. The idea that's is to right. rattle your way through them. They're housekeeping questions. They're, they should be done in five minutes. No, but, come sometime, but sometimes it's just important to suddenly out of nowhere emphasize that not all diffraction is the same. You know? How come those light topics take longer? Because it's very complicated. Yeah. Just like uh, optics is. Agreed. Should we uh, continue because the geometry? They're, well, they're not light topics. They're actually heavy. <laughs> boom boom <laughs> anyway let's not rehash the entire quantum mechanics discussion from yesterday if you want to check out what number were we on today 1131 is it or is that yesterday 32 so, yeah check out 1131 if you want to see the quantum mechanics discussion between Adam myself Arwin and late in the game quantum eraser and also rebel it was quite a a fun conversation yesterday, I've got to admit. It was too much to trim out because it was uh, that's my original intention was to trim it out because I was like trying to make a concise point, but Arwin wasn't having any of it, <laughs> so that it didn't end up being something trim outable. You'd have to listen to the whole discussion, which is just as fine. You know, I'd rather recommend the entire debate. And it's like, yeah, you can, you can get into a fairly, fairly in depth. Yesterday's show, I thought yesterday's show was well worth listening, listening back, really. Yeah, I, I, I certainly enjoyed listening to it. Um, listening to it back, I should say. But, um, yeah, I don't want to rehash it again today. <laughs> Let's hope we go in a different direction. I just spent I just spent the evening chuckling about <laughs> various different comments on, on DA, TRH's video. You know, Quantum Racer does his presentation, and as he scrolls down, in brackets, it says, anticipated vanilla Saiyan interruption. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Although he didn't really interrupt it, he actually just added to it. No, it was perfect. It was it was exactly as it was. There was nothing wrong with his interruption because the pre the preceding comment was to say it's a coin toss whether or not if you heat water up it'll boil, <laughs> right? And then chocolate saying no, vanilla saying says yeah, I stick my ramen noodles in, I press the microwave on, and it's a coin toss whether or not they come out nice and warm and fluffy or come out crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was brilliant. Oh my god, that's great. But I love that they have Vidal say always interrupting quantum entanglement. <laughs> no, and quantum entanglement is always very, so, so very nice. Yeah, he says, <laughs> I love you at the end. He says, you can trust me, I'm from the future. And then he's got Universal <laughs> Soldier. <laughs> yeah. Just like, he's just done the parody so perfectly. It's like, because... 
you, you think about it, Quantum Race has got the, the Terminator and he's like, back in the day when he first released the intro, he's like, yeah, I've come from the future to set the world straight or something like that, just as a fun you know, aside. But that's just like his little logo that he's got and has it in the backdrop to his videos. So he's got the Terminator. So to change that to Universal Soldier and one of them, instead of having like a decent face put on it, it's just got the smiley face. <laughs> just like, what? <laughs> I've come from the future. I'm a Unisol. <laughs> Unisol. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Shout out to DATRH. <laughs> yep. Keep them coming, man. I thought Snoozing Soldier was also like, it seems like that character is more developed, even. From yes. his own thing. Sleeping Warrior guy. Like, uh, I, I noticed Deborah was missing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure right. she <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Discord server was shut down because free speech was. Uh, not allowed at this particular junk t juncture. So th the Discord server says shut down because free speech between citizens is deemed unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I didn't even see. See, I just watched it one time and, and like I, I really have to watch it again and go over it. Because you're you right, with like the chats, you'll throw like funny shit into the chat. You won't even know if you didn't look. You have to watch it once without sound. And just pay attention to what's going on on screen. You know, pause it at various different mm -hmm. bits. That's the thing that I like. So I'm really into having something that's clearly taken probably 20 minutes work, that first opening screen with all the different products on it. Um, you know, all the different face masks of very different qualities, but they're all the same picture, just a different price. <laughs> just saying, yeah, this one's better quality. Oh, oh and did, did you see the, uh, the Elon Musk toilet paper? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Instead, it's nah, got, it's got the Magna Carta or something. Didn't. It's the first. No. It's the first. I didn't, I didn't look. I didn't do like the close up like I did with the first one. I think it's got something like the Magna Carta or something like that. I couldn't quite make it out. It's too small, but like a really important old document, and it says toilet paper substitute. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was the Fifth Amendment. In any event, it was just like I say, an old important document that's now just been deemed toilet paper substitute. I'm pretty sure it was the Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wipe your ass with this. <laughs> Funniest part is all, all the all the the icons had had the masks on. <laughs> yeah, they've all got a mask. <laughs> <laughs> They're all scared. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of work, and like I say, th th that that opening screen's probably on about the same time as I have mine on for a fraction of a second, and then it goes to the to the opening intro. You know, thought crime thought crime is not death or something like that. You know, so that's talking about thought crime. Or well, thought crime is not punishable by death. Thought crime is death. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so good just good because I don't like that subject. I don't want to cover the subject because either you've got to be pro, I'm terrified of it, or con, I think it's a complete hoax. And I don't want to, I don't really want to express either on a show about the nature of Earth. That's the nature of propaganda. And I'm just not, it's just not this show's bag, right? We don't, we don't really do that here. Or I'll try and avoid doing that here. Whereas with that, it's a complete parody. He's, he's taking the piss. So he's saying, you know, things like, some of the conspiracy theorists are saying at the moment. So you've got him saying you shouldn't for any moment assume that the government has changed the statistics from cold and seasonal flu. Um, but he's saying you should not think that. No, this is no time for paranoia. <laughs> you know, obviously he's saying it sarcastically, but I don't know. I just think it was genius and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it with such humour. I couldn't do it in the way he parodied it. I couldn't do it with any any sort anything like that kind of quality so it just i admire somebody that's got that much skill but far yeah, beyond but my he, level it took a lot of time writing that you you got to see that did he look he, he he looked over that text very 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 carefully many many times to get it absolutely perfect yeah i agree and he's drawn up the presentation that QE is doing and edited it into the screen along with the chat running alongside all the different face masks, people joining. It was an editing, I can imagine it was a lot of editing, a lot of work, a lot of voice work, you know, camera work, everything you could imagine. And it's like seven minutes of probably, I don't know, 
lots of hours of pouring your heart and soul into something that's that's come and like every YouTube video three days from now we've forgotten about. <laughs> nah, you will not be forgotten. No, I'm not saying he will, but I'm just saying most people, you know, YouTube videos are fairly easy come, easy go, right? They're they're disposable. On the whole. Some people are lucky and get viral videos that last an eternity, but on the whole, that's not the case. My, mine are edible. They're not disposable. <laughs> Tenth Man Dishes. Yep. Tenth Man, who, who, yeah. sings your, uh, who sings your theme song? You like it? Yeah. I mean, it's that's not very daughter. long or whatever, but it's nice. No, that, that's my daughter. That's my daughter. Oh, uh, that's very awesome. Cool. Yeah, he, he got his daughter to sing for him and his wife to cook for him. <laughs> I knew you were going to say. <laughs> I, Are you saying I'm, he's not cooking his cuckoo? He's not doing anything. No, he's I'm, just sat in his chair telling everyone to do anything. He didn't perform any cooking act so far in the video. Uh, so. Chocolate, I may be cuckoo, but I got cuckoo for my cuckoo pops. <laughs> yeah, man. I agree. It, I've always said, if everybody does a little, I don't have to do anything. That's right. So we've got Bev still wanting to finish his point, and there's a screenshot of Master B. <laughs> calling me. Yeah. Did you want to finish? You were saying there's a picture that I put up, but we never got to because we had to start the show. Yeah. I was, I was listening to them. I thought it was quite... I did watch that Darth thing, and I, I did find it funny as well. He's got a brilliant sense of humour, hasn't he? Yes, very good. Right, I've got Tenth Man's image. Well, nearly there, yep. Yep. Well, yeah, this goes back to the, the geometry problem that they have. I, um, I wanted to point out that, that, you know, the radius that you have it, it, within Euclidean geometries defined from a centre point and then the radius... And then the outer point of the the radius on on their model is a horizontal, which is fantastic. That when you think at the end of R, that's what they have a horizontal plane surface. One of you read out what's but, on screen. It's just the previous message to your message. If you want to read it. Uh, sorry, I, I'm trying to hang out. On a spherical planet, it starts. Oh, that's the wiki um, picture, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, the, it, within wiki, they have uh, on the spherical model. So their spherical model that they have has a, a horizontal that comes out from the pole um, and also a horizontal that comes from the equator so they have intersecting horizontals that are perpendicular now I don't know doesn't not in any sort of geometry that I think of but I mean that that's actually what it says I don't understand where, which geometry that is possible on. Uh, globe geometry. Now debunked. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's not like a geometry can give you a proof of of how it works. That's the whole point of geometry. It it gives you proofs, or it proves itself within. Uh, everything other than the axioms is is provable within geometry or within Euclidean geometry anyway. So this, um, I don't understand the geometry it, which enables them to have a a, a horizontal that intersects a horizontal because I don't know. It in my reality view of the world, a vertical and a horizontal they are. Uh, real terms um you know real life uh words that are used not on not necessarily 
uh, uh, through geometry on the paper the the geometry would explain uh, what a perpendicular is um, and how the straight lines work through the geometry whereas uh, a vertical and a horizontal are real life terms uh, definable by a plumb line and a level so i can't see how they can use um geometry uh, that doesn't fit them terms that's basically where we're getting to um but it, when when you ask a baller something like this um there's something strange that happens because they automatically say oh yeah yeah that's that's what happens but they have no way to prove it they they don't understand the proofs that geometry gives you leaves them in a very strange situation of of how do you prove that you don't you no, described they, it in they the can't they assume the radius value and then apply it to an observation but they bastardize what's actually being calculated by putting it in muppet vision like this side on It should have been well, spotted. It should have been spotted when they started refracting things using the non-geometric values. That should have been the point that the alarm bells went off. But like any smear over the top of a lie, initially people gobble it up, and that's what we did. You know, all oh, right. So you're using your bog standard geometry, and you're drawing a straight line to a physical obstruction, and then what? What's that? You say the targets we're looking at—they're all refracted up to this point where you've got this physical geometry with straight lines. You should have spotted it then. It's um, surveyors use Euclidean geometry. Everybody uses Euclidean geometry. Whenever you measure a distance to anywhere, you would assume um, a right angle triangle in order to then you can work trigonometry for your angles and all the things like that. So. You have to have the vertical and the horizontal of the bottom of the triangle being straight lines and uh, perpendicular to each other to form a right angle triangle. So any measurement that you ever make is performed when using Euclidean geometry. Now, I'm, I'm not aware of any way that they could use a measurement within Euclidean geometry in order to disprove the geometry itself because you would have to disprove that vertical and horizontal are perpendicular right to each other in other words they're working against the axioms that the maths they're using is based on yeah yeah, yeah they, they just f completely forget about the rules of the the geometry that they pretend that they use Shout out to Cleary, who says, the geometric horizon is not geological. Yeah, big shout out to the black swan, because the black swan has exposed this fundamental problem that they have with the geometry. That Just the word that once they've realized they've lost the geometric horizon, then it's time to re-look at the actual geometry that you're using. And you find that it's Euclidean and everybody, please just have a look at it. It's, it's, it's a perfect system. I like perfect the geometry. That the early adopters of the argument on the globe side didn't realize how the argument was structured and their requirement, as you put it for a geometric horizon. Now I've been screaming this down the mic for three months now. So, you know, anyone who's yeah. familiar with the show will know I've been shouting, you know, you require a geometric horizon and it's very true. But the guys who are like, oh, we can solve this problem. It's refracted. <laughs> and they don't realize how much pain they're causing their own model moving forward. Not trying to figure out how to justify a geometric existence, but a non-geometric horizon, unlike the one in their model. They think that they've got a win. It's like, you no, know, what you've just done is shot yourself in the head. Because this is your declaration that we don't have what you require anymore. And that's precisely what we declared when we exposed the black swan in the first instance. You only need one 
to debunk the geometry. Once it goes beyond the geometric limits, it'll never be geometric again. And everyone's like, nah, it's a dead swan. It doesn't matter because they haven't paid attention to the actual argument. And then they go in headlong to try and debunk it and declare just how non-geometric it is, exactly as the argument was set out. And you're like, well, that's what the argument is. You don't have a geometric horizon. You just didn't read between the lines. You read the modus tollens argument and assume that the first premise was wrong based on your geometry. Oh, what? That's a straw man. We don't have your geometry. Oh, well, welcome to Flat Earth. <laughs> but they don't get it. They think they're winning. No, no. they just give up. Give it's up almost like they, they forgot that they used to debate with us about the physicality of whatever was making that boat or building or whatever disappear bottom up. That used to be the curve doing that. The physical hump or the bulge or whatever word you want to use to describe it, it was physical. It, it's always physical, according to them. <laughs> so, I don't know what happened. Yeah, they forgot what they were... <laughs> oh, Flex, wrong happened. They forgot That's what they were happened. fighting for. You're absolutely right. Any fundies in the chat? Uh, Hello, anybody in Discord? I, I don't know. I don't recognise any of these names. Oh, they're, they're handy in the chat, but they don't seem to uh, want to come and actually talk. Well, we're lucky hey, did you way. say they forgot what they were fighting for, Nathan? Yeah, they forgot they were fighting for there being an earth curve obstruction. Like when they argued for this picture on screen now, they argued that the bottom of the island was missing because this physical line they claimed was a physical geometric horizon calculable in their geometric maths was obscuring the bottom of the island. Well, that's their model. That's what their model implies. But they drew a straight tangent to this point when inside of profile, Muppet vision, orthographic view, where you see your side of your own head. Well, when they were doing that, they were using standard geometry to the geometric horizon because it's absolutely necessitated in a geometric model. And then utilizing that geometry to give them their terrestrial refraction value, 7 over 6R, again, utilising the R value that gives them the geometric horizon in the model. Well, we've only got one horizon. A horizon is the apparent position where the sky meets the ground. Or in this case, the apparent position where the sky meets the ground. Well, no, bottom of the Isle of Man, and how much it's being obscured by that physical geometric horizon. And that's what they drew their straight line for a tangent to, while simultaneously claiming that that straight line tangent to a physical geometric horizon based on an R value also gave them a refractive value based on the R value and the geometry. So the entire thing collapsed upon itself when you point out that no, you don't have a physical geometric horizon anymore. And their defense to that is say, oh, we'd only see it if it was all the air was sucked out. You're like, no, you claim you see it based on your geometry. That's what you're claiming is obscuring the Isle of Man, claiming boats are going over. That's what you say the sun sets behind. That's the physicality of your sphere Earth that you think you're standing on, proven out by its physical geometry in your geometric maths and its geometric horizon. And then they reply to that, nah, we only see a refracted one. Oh, well then, bye-bye globe geometry, moron. Welcome to Flat Earth. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to... That's what I was going to say is they didn't forget about shit. All right, they... <laughs> They realized very quickly how devastating the Black Swan Horizon is, and therefore they immediately had they, they had no place else to go except for to claim optics. And now they're trying to dump optical refraction on top of terrestrial refraction to account for you know Black Swan incidents. Yeah, I, I would. Agree they they with didn't you forget about a damn I thing. Say... They're that intellectually dishonest. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I would say that they didn't forget what they're trying to do is Jedi mind trick everybody into thinking, yes, yes, we have never argued that the geometric horizon was physical. We've never argued that, right? <laughs> like Rumpus and Brenda and all of them. That's what they're saying. You know, we've never argued that. Well, really, <laughs> because I've been here for a few arguments with that when you said the same thing. Luckily, Nathan tapes these things. <laughs> they're on, they're on record. You morons arguing about how ge geometric your horizon is supposed to be. I have a question oh. concerning that, though, Chocolate. Beyond oh. Brenda and Rumpus, has anybody else actually gone that far? 
Yeah, Basically. loads of them. I've got them all documented. You've got an okay. Orthodox doing it. You've got Kosho doing it. You've got AB Science doing it. You've got Simon Dan doing it. They're all doing it. They're all towing oh, wow. the same exact line. Huh. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the bad part, man. That you know, they they've reneged. <laughs> they've reneged. Oh, on go go over to Jim Panda yeah. server. I'm sure that's the fucking spawning ground of of all of that crap. Maybe that's just that's just my opinion or my guess. What the spawning ground for them relinquishing the necessi necessitated geometric horizon from their geometric model? That's a great ground for spawning arguments no. that put nooses the, around anybody yeah, who the spawning, for it. Yeah, the spawning ground for for their terrible arguments. Yeah, sorry to sorry to cut in on. You. Yeah, the argument was carefully phrased, and their rebuttal was anticipated. Their rebuttal is to say we don't have a geometric horizon, you fools. And we laugh at them and go, ha ha, welcome to Flat Earth then. What's this one marked with an X? We haven't got two. No, no, we only see one. The one we see is based on this one. So not this one. So that one's the second one then. Well, no, we don't see it. No, you're damn right we don't. Welcome to Flat Earth. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the, the right. man, that is the best point. And the way you said it, it's like twisting the knife. Yeah, you tell us just how much we don't see your geometric necessitated horizon when we've only got one of them. <laughs> your geometric oh, horizon oh. still described as the apparent position where the sky meets the ground now, isn't it? But it isn't the apparent position where the sky meets the ground. It's a second position that only exists in your model. It's not the horizon we see, like you tell us with a hand wave. Well, we're going to just start repeating your hand wave. Med med uh, let's start that again. We're going to start repeating your Jedi hand wave and just repeating it back in a slightly different tone. Oh, we don't expect to see the geometric horizon. Yeah, we don't expect to see a geometric horizon marked with an X-labeled horizon in your model because we don't have one. That's correct. Welcome to Flat Earth. Well, Nathan, they have a uh, major, major blind spot that we all see on three of your top arguments. Coriolis. Now they're arguing... There is no deviation when the argument is for deviation. Then there's gas pressure without a container. Now they're arguing you need a container to prove no gas, to have gas pressure without a container, and they use a container. Now this one, the geometric horizon. What are they doing here? <laughs> Say we don't have one, but they need one. Everything is doublespeak and embarrassment whenever they come on. That's why they haven't been on for who knows, what, a month, two months now on a regular basis? Is they just get killed by their own illogical statements? Yeah, two months in flat earth terms, three weeks in real terms. I'm still confused as to if your geometric horizon, if your geometric horizon distance can be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet, if you believe that's a straw man, why are you even responding to it? Why are you answering? Why are you saying refraction explains it? But it shouldn't explain it, right? Because it's a straw man. Which I don't see how it's a straw man because it's not about belief. It's about your math. <laughs> this is your math. Yeah, that's so you Because if this is a straw man, then your, your entire globe model is a straw man. Yeah, I asked Quantum <laughs> Race to add that to the, to the um, presentation on the Black Swan. If you claim that the premise of a physical geometric horizon based on globe geometry is a straw man, the response to that is welcome to flat earth. So the premise that we have a physical geometric sphere beneath our feet and you can measure it with physical sphere geometry, that's a straw man, is it? Yeah, welcome to flat earth. <laughs> and they think that the, the sentence, oh, we don't believe that, is going to help them. Uh, nobody addressed any beliefs in there. It doesn't say any belief about anything in the modus tollen, so I don't understand why you would come up with that. Unless you're just reaching, of course, because you can't respond. The only thing I can think of. Yeah, it's been condensed down now, this argument, to a single sentence. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 39.59 miles, 
then the distance to horizon can be no more than 1.225 to the square root of the observer's height and feet. That's the argument. One sentence. That's a wrap. <laughs> we, we, we do see a horizon past 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. So, therefore, Earth is not a sphere. Take care now. Bye-bye then. Hey, also, isn't refraction just, like, distortion? If you like. Right, so somehow this Say distortion again? is going to... Yeah, he said, yeah, if you like. So somehow this very distortion is going to give you an, uh, say, an extra 10 miles of visibility. <laughs> that's what I was... That's what I was but that's but meanwhile, what I was you're going to talk man. about how bendy the cranes are. <laughs> it's great. Well, that's a red herring against the actual argument. So the argument is very specific and about the horizon and the geometry of the claimed physical obstruction they call the geometric sphere edge horizon. Well, that's the argument. It's not all to do with any uh, oil platforms. They're only useful for a marked distance. So the second oil platform is at 9.6 miles, I think. Well, therefore you can see that beyond that distance there is a horizon. Well, when people start saying, well, let's have a look at the oil platforms and even Simon Dan said they were being obscured from the bottom up. He's like, why are these being obscured from the bottom up? It's like, are you insane? Do you, do you actually think that while simultaneously telling us about why the horizons behind the oil platforms, you're going to claim that they're being obscured by what exactly? <laughs> the, the horizon that's been refracted behind. You know, it's beyond mental gymnastics to put the horizon in a refracted position behind where it's supposed to be obstructing things but beyond that Simon Dan's got it behind things where it's behind where it's supposed to be obstructing things but also simultaneously obstructing things from the bottom up I mean he's so stupid Simon Dan how he's escalated to the levels he has I don't I don't really understand it because he is so stupid Literally, he's arguing about a refracted horizon, the form of physical obstruction being behind and then asking the question why is stuff being blocked from the bottom up just idiot. Complete idiot. Do you remember when... Yeah, let's not forget about how uh, perspective affects our sight, too. If you're looking down a long hallway and you get on a ladder and you put your head up to that roof, you, things are going to disappear from the top down. So, you know, wowee, Simon Dan, or no Simon Dan. There was an echo there. He's implying... Oh, He's implying that the refracted horizon that he's justifying is simultaneously obscuring things from the bottom up in the near foreground when there's nothing in the foreground, the horizon's behind. But he's asking the question, why is it being obscured from the bottom up in the, chronologically, the second released Black Swan under that title? So, in that image... Do you even think he realises he's doing that, though? He doesn't understand like, the argument. Do he's rebutting an argument he simply doesn't understand. So therefore, he's going to make some complete nonsense statements, like justifying why a physical claim to be sphere edge obstruction is behind things it's supposed to be obscuring, but then ask the question, why are they being obstructed? What, what are you nuts? Just clearly thick. Nathan, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm just experiencing echo here. Uh, do you remember Rumpus's first go at this, his very first answer? When this first came up with the black swan, do you recall that? Yeah, he said it was the matrix. Yeah, he said it's a glitch in the matrix. How he has moved on. Why did he even say that? Well, he's moved his position onto the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. In other words, say, no, no, I don't want to put this photo into my collection. This doesn't fit my group. My shot group doesn't like this photo, so we'll ignore this one. Texas sharpshooter fallacy. I made a video titled exactly that, where Rumpus re repositions his argument to, no, we just don't accept that picture. We'll accept ones that correlate with our model. Yeah, he's dishonest. Super. They it's disgusting. Are. Yeah, no, disgusting. They are. Well, since they, the black swan... They all bring up the same nonsensical picture from BMLSB69 that's supposed to be, to them, a white swan. Right? They still bring it up, even though QE deaded that whole notion the first time he presented the black swan by saying that this 
white swan does not debunk or negate the existence of the black one. You guys haven't gotten it yet, man. I'm going to have to put like another four months on, on top of the 14 months, all right? Because <laughs> this is getting out of control. Right. Don't I will say one thing about Rumpus. Just, just one second. I'll just shout out to Shatless Bassoon. He says, Circulus in pro bando. Go in peace. Okay. Thank you very much for the super chat, Shatless Bassoon. Sorry, Travis. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I will say one thing about Rumpus, though. <clears throat> he, he did get into an argument with Zanuck about... Uh, like the second second law of thermodynamics and vacuum and air, and Zanuck's position was that it's uh, a, re a reversible process, and Rumpus was having to tell him, "No, it's an irreversible process." <laughs> so uh, I'll say, well, you, you know, good on him there. Well, hang on, hang on, don't don't be so easily <laughs> saying that because Rumpus has said that he is the smartest person in the baller community and everyone pales in comparison to him, uh, except for this one guy, I can't remember he mentioned, but he's not close to Rumpus. So Rumpus is, has uh, put on the crown of the smartest guy in that community. So of course he's going to correct them because he's got to be the smartest guy in that dumb community. Self-crowned, by the way. Yeah, I saw a video. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he's right. I, I... Go on, sorry. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he's right, though. I, I, I recall reading that. Um, I have a, I think it's from Stanford. Uh, it's, it talks all about entropy. So, yeah, second law of thermodynamics, got vacuum chambers, you know, <laughs> the whole nine yards. Talks about oh. uh, air pressure being an approximation. <laughs> or not, not, not the air pressure, but the uh, air behavior, gas behavior being approximation. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff, but um, I'm pretty sure it's an irreversible process because that's <laughs> that's a lot of what entropy is, and and the fight against it. Oh. Do you remember Travis? I well, asked him a question a couple of shows ago. Uh, well, not a couple of shows ago, maybe a week ago, on the geometric horizon. I said, Rumpus, it is. Is it an actual location, question mark, 1.23 miles, uh, one foot observer height, based on 39.59 radius? That didn't go too well for him. Does someone need to play the little clip of uh, the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to the Earth? Uh, I or how about meow, 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 meow? I don't, I don't have it to hand, sorry. <laughs> I would if I did, but I don't. Yeah, he might need to try to work out whether it applies to the Earth or not. So, <laughs> I what, think... What that. kind of chocolate, what kind of law is it? What's the title? It would be a natural law. So it applies to nature, then? Nature, yes. So that, that, where would you establish such a law? In the natural world, so here, on terra firma. Yeah, here, here, yeah. So definitely, I, I would think so. <laughs> so figured out based on what's happening in nature and applicable to nature. So definitely applies to the Earth, right? Unless you've got a fundamentalist religious belief that the sky is a vacuum, which would be violated by that law of nature. In those circumstances, you can declare as the smartest globe head in the bunch, that a law of nature doesn't apply to your religious belief in a heliocentric model. So it doesn't apply to the heliocentric model. Obviously, you've got these lights in the sky being physical bodies of gas that aren't dispersing into the sky vacuum also. So obviously, natural law doesn't apply to models because they're just models. The heliocentric globe Earth model is just a model. So natural law doesn't apply because it's just a model. It's not really the world we're standing on. We're not actually on a sphere. It's just a philosophical way of seeing things and conceptualizing things. The fact that from a very early age, for some strange reason, we've been told to actually reify our existence into a sphere-shaped one is neither in nor there. They make it explicitly clear that it's just a model. And people like Rumpus, when describing said model, will tell you that natural law doesn't apply to it. 
Well, well, that should say it all. If natural law doesn't apply to the model, it's not the world you live in. That would be a reification fallacy. Well, matrix law. The thing is, it, it, if if the second law of thermodynamics happens to describe in its uh, definition, it describes its use in an isolated system. Would that mean it doesn't apply to the Earth, Nathan? Well, they use the isolated system, which doesn't exist anywhere ever, to simplify the law to explain how it works. There are certain parameters that will apply differently to open versus closed systems, but the law of entropy applies universally. It's a natural law. The oversimplification using something that is not in existence, i.e. an isolated system, which does not exist in nature, is merely a way of describing a natural law. Simple. Hmm. So, so otherwise they wouldn't be like able to The ideal it. gas law, right? Something like that. Uh, it's one or the other, Travis or Chocolate, I don't mind who. Yeah, go ahead, Travis. I'm sorry, go ahead, Chocolate. Go, uh, go ahead, man, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. He's giving you. He's giving way to you. Go ahead, Travis. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, so, the, so they do that in, in order to fully describe it from all angles. Yeah, to simplify it. Sort of, kind of like simple. the ideal gas law, right? <laughs> they they use it to describe, but there's no ideal gas, right? No, there's no ideal gas. There's, there is no such animal. It doesn't exist. You're not going to produce an ideal gas to show me exactly in line with the ideal gas law what's going to occur because there is no such thing as an ideal gas. Does that mean that gas law doesn't apply? Well, no. It's describing how gas behaves. Of course it applies. But when describing it in an oversimplistic manner, you'll use it with this ideal gas just to make it clear and simple. Well, also because gases ideally behave this behave this way. Uh, well, <laughs> that's kind of clumsy, but it, yeah, if you like. <laughs> it's more the fact that if you're going to describe entropy, or show a demonstration, like a guy with a bromine, right? So he's showing an entropy increase, and he opens a valve between a vacuum and some gas, and shows that it fills the available volume. As soon as he opens it, it instantaneously fills the available volume. And he explains that you're just seeing an increase in entropy. Well, that's the second law of thermodynamics. It is the entropy law. Well, he's doing that in a closed system. Well, suddenly, hold on, hold on. A lecturer on the second law of thermodynamics describing entropy. No, that can't be right, because it only applies to isolated systems. Well, why was his demonstration done in a closed system then? Well, for one reason, you couldn't have gas pressure without that container. He'd need that to make the demonstration. It's an absolutely necessary antecedent. That's what an antecedent is. It's required. In the first instance, he must have a container to make this demonstration possible. And he's demonstrating an increase in entropy. As he opens the valve, the bromine fills the vacuum. Fairly straightforward stuff. That's not an isolated system, though, is it? <laughs> no, it's a closed system. But it's absolutely still applicable to demonstrate that, which is described on paper with an isolated system. Shock horror, it still applies to the closed system. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe he didn't confirm with Rumpus to see if uh, <laughs> he could operate that in an isolated system. Maybe he wasn't on Earth when he did that. I don't know. <laughs> Clown show. Well, let's not forget now, the show rated Rumpus quite high. Quite high indeed. Say that again. The show rated Rumpus quite high. <laughs> yeah, I remember we were rating all the ballers. It was a Rumpus category, Brenda category, or a Dawn category. Oh, that meaningless arbitrary <laughs> assignment that we gave during a joke fun show. That one. Yeah, it's yeah. set in stone that. That's, that's like basically a yardstick. Hey, that was a blast. I think it still holds up as a concept. Any ballers in Discord? It's based on three years of interactions. It should They're hold still up. still measuring time in the table, chocolate. But it's meaningless. It doesn't matter. It, it, it wouldn't matter if Dawn Treader came in with an argument. His prior intellectual prowess is irrelevant. What's relevant is his quality of argument presented in the moment 
Same applies for credibility, uh, criminal intent. In other words, there could be a jailbird, multi-murdering son of a bitch block behind bars who happens to join the show because he gets access to Skype during a jailbreak and then puts forward a really good globe argument. Are we going to go, well, you're a jailbird? No, we're going to try and address the argument. That's all that matters. So their level of intellectual superiority over each other is mm, not only relevant. Well, um, on that note, we have a baller in here, Extreme Sis. Good to have you. Extreme Sis. Hello. Maybe Extreme Shy. Assist. Hello. Maybe Shy because we're live. Well, while we're waiting for a reaction from him, big shout out to the 148 people who've made their way to this live show. You watching on Nathan Friday. Oakley? Happy Friday. Happy Friday, indeed. If you're watching this on the Nathan Oakley channel and you did want to watch live, There'll be a link in the info box and comment section so you can check out these shows when they do run live. Isn't it uh, quite apparent that when Chocolate cites the really is level statement from George Muser that this is a disconnect for the ballers. They have to go to a model and some kind of mathematical description of things that doesn't apply to the really is physical nature of the earth that they're trying to reify into a globe. Yeah, when describing the uh, stellar horizon or the celestial horizon, in the yeah. description of it, it says the imaginary line drawn between, and then Quantum Eraser stops reading and says, oh no, we work at the really is level here, unlike Musa and his cronies. Yeah, they're, they're, they use so many things that aren't real to try to validate the model to be real. Can we hear that quote, Chocolate, if you're around? What? <clears throat> we can, we do, we must consider Newtonian gravity as a force. Doesn't mean it really is one, but we don't necessarily have to work at the really is level. George Muser, 2019. And with that, I'll say, if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on the Nathan Oakley channel, then this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. Once again, a massive thank you to today's Discord and G Plus panels for making this live show possible. Stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley 1980 as the after show begins now. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!